Good to be back, everyone. We bring you the latest Tezian news. Japan increases security relations with Australia to new level. Japan's foreign minister in an online meeting with his Australian counterpart says he hopes to further talks of increasing security and trade relations to new levels between the two countries. Toshimitsu Motegi makes comment during a video conference between foreign and defense ministers from Japan and Australia. Australian Foreign Minister Marie Spain also refers to the friendly ties of the two countries, and she also says the three Pacific athletes who are excited to join the Tokyo Games that are set to kick off on July 23rd. They are so passionate and so excited to be able to participate in the games that Japan is going to bring to the world in some of the most difficult circumstances that they have ever seen for a modern Olympics. Thailand begins mass vaccination scheme due to prevent COVID-19. Thailand is kicking off its mass vaccinations across the country to provinces hardest hit by the virus. The majority inoculate are receiving the Sinovac vaccine either purchased from or donated by China. Local production in Thailand has seen delays or vaccine appointments have had to be cancelled and delivery to neighboring countries held back. But in the coming months, it's hoped manufacturing can rapidly speed up. Around 2% of people have received two doses of vaccine so far. Thailand hopes to vaccinate 70% of its population by the year-end critical to reopening the country to tourism and resuscitating an economy reeling under the impact of COVID-19. According to the Center for COVID-19 Situation Administration, Thailand reported 2,671 new COVID-19 cases and 23 more fatalities. The capital Bangkok is the epicenter of the latest outbreak, reported 675 new cases. Total of the confirmed cases are 177,467, of which 80% are confirmed during the past two months in the latest wave of COVID-19 outbreak. Myanmar authorities open a corruption case against leader Aung San Suu Kyi and other members for her party. The state-run Global New Light of Myanmar says new corruption cases open against Myanmar deposed leader Aung San Suu Kyi and other former officials from her government. Yeah! The cases of the latest of a series bring against elected leader Suu Kyi, who was overthrown by the army on February 1st in coup that has plunged the Southeast Asian country into chaos. The state newspaper quotes the Anti-Corruption Commission says saying the accusations relate to the misuse of land for the charitable Do Kin Yi Foundation. The paper stated the law Suu Kyi was charged under provides for up to 15 years in prison for those found guilty. The newspaper says case file had been opened against Suu Kyi and several other officials from the capital Naypyidaw at police stations. Cases Suu Kyi already faced range from the illegal possession of the walkie-talkie radios to breaking the Official Secrets Act, which is punishable by up to 14 years in jail. The military has also accused her of taking bribes. Her supporters say to the cases are politically motivated. The army overthrew Suu Kyi, saying her party had cheated in November elections, an accusation rejected by the previous election commission and international monitors. Chinese meet with several Asian countries in order to fight the COVID-19 pandemic. Chinese Foreign Minister Wang Yi holds bilateral talks with his counterparts of Brunei, Singapore and Indonesia in the southwest China municipality of Chongqing, facing the ongoing pandemic and global uncertainties. He also appreciates China's support to the Southeast Asia, which has involved shipments of Chinese vaccines to nearly every nation in the region. They have also announced that they will continue to fight the COVID-19 pandemic together in resuming safe international travel and ensuring medical supplies. This year marks the 30th anniversary of the establishment of dialect relations between China and the Association of Southeast Asian Nations, which is of special significance in building on the past achievements and pursuing new progress. 
a foreign ministerial meeting hold to commemorate the 30th anniversary of China-ASEAN dialogue relations and get ready to open up another 30 years of even greater cooperation, focusing on cooperation in defeating COVID-19 and lifting the regional economic out of the pandemic slump. The European Union will impose a new round of sanctions on Myanmar's military junta. European Union Affairs Chief Joseph Borrell in an interview in Jakarta after meetings with Southeast Asian diplomats says the European Union will impose a new round of sanctions on Myanmar's military junta and its economic interest in the coming days. We have been sanctioning and we will continue sanctioning. There is a third row of sanctions in preparation that will be approved on the coming days uh, to uh, personnel from the military junta and also entities that represent the economic interests of the military, which are very important in Myanmar. Borrell affirms the fresh sanctions from the European Union will be the third batch introduced since the military ousted Myanmar's democratically elected government on February 1st. Since the coup, European Union sanctions have frozen assets or applied travel bans on 21 military and civilian members of Myanmar's junta. European citizens and companies are also forbidden from making funds available to those sanctions. The coup plunged military into crisis after 10 years of tentative steps toward democracy. While in Jakarta, Borrell met with envoys from the ASEAN. The headquarters of ASEAN, which includes Myanmar as one of its 10 members, is based in the Indonesian capital, Jakarta. Borrell notes that the Myanmar representative to ASEAN to end repression and go back to normal political behavior through free and fair elections. Two senior ASEAN officials are heading to Myanmar to meet with the junta the first visits by the bloc's representatives since the coup was launched. Personal protection equipment and plastic waste cleaning up under the sea in Batangas province of the Philippines. The coronavirus pandemic is adding a new unwelcome element to sea pollution of the town of Bauan, a popular dive site in the Philippines Batangas province. Regular visitors and local residents reports a rise in the number of face masks, face shields and personal protection equipment being collected from the sea. Arnel Vergara, a Filipino professional diver who has been diving in the area for the past decade, says he might spot one or two masks within a few weeks of diving, but now he sees them every other time he goes out. Carmela Sevilla, a resort owner and diving instructor, says the masks were adding to the plastic bags, sachets, diapers and packaging materials that plague local waters during the monsoon season. A 2021 report by scientific online publication Our World in Data says the majority of ocean plastics around the world originates from rivers and coastlines. The component 81% is from Asia, with a third of Asian plastic coming from the Philippines. South Korea arrives at the G7 summit to talk about climate change and the pandemic. South Korean President Moon Jae-in arrives at a new Kuwait airport in Cornwall for the G7 summit where talk of countering China could overshadow Seoul's efforts to be seen as a bigger player on issues such as climate change and the COVID-19 pandemic. South Korea is one of the several guest nations invited to the G7 meeting as the rich democracies try to show the world that they can still act in Congress to tackle major crises by donating hundreds of millions of COVID-19 vaccines to poor countries and pledging to slow climate change. However, the summit is also expected to include discussions on free trade and countries Beijing's growing influence. 
Another guest nation at the summit, Australia, has called on the G7 to back reform of the World Trade Organization to address the growing use of economic coercion amid a dispute with China. A presidential official did not mention China but says that Moon will take part in discussions on the need to reinforce the global supply chain and free trade. Anti-China sentiment has reached historic highs in South Korea and Moon's ruling party is facing domestic pressure on the issue. Germany and South Korea meet in Seoul, discuss issues and regional situation in Korean Peninsula. German Defense Minister Annegret Kramp Karrenbauer holds a meeting with her South Korean counterpart Su Wok in Seoul. Seoul's Defense Minister in a statement says the two ministers discuss regional issues, including situation on the Korean Peninsula, and agree to improve cooperation on national defense and security. The ministry adds, Kramp Karenbauer expresses her support on the peace process of the Korean Peninsula. After the meeting, Kramp Karenbauer is scheduled to visit the border village of Panmunjom in the demilitarized zone that divides the two Koreas. China urges Japan not to dump nuclear polluted water into the sea. Spokesman from the Ministry of Foreign Affairs says Japan must not willfully discharge nuclear polluted water into the sea in disregard of the opposition from the international community. The spokesman Wang Wenbin in a press briefing in Beijing says many Pacific Rim countries, including China, all opposes Japan's decision to discharge nuclear contaminated water into the sea. The Japanese government is disregard of questioning and objection at home and abroad make the highly irresponsible unilateral decision to dispose of nuclear contaminated water from Fukushima by discharging it into the sea. Before exhausting safe disposal means disclosing all relevant information, fully consulting with neighboring countries and other stakeholders or coming up with verification arrangement that can be monitored. Meanwhile, Wong says the disposal of nuclear contaminated water requires the greatest prudence and we cannot afford a misstep. Archaeologists afraid climate change slowly can erase the world's oldest cave painted in Indonesia. Archaeologist says the world's oldest cave painting is decaying at a rapid pace due to the climate change as experts race against time to find ways to preserve the priceless prehistorical artwork in Indonesia. The painting in a limestone cave in Indonesia island of Sulawesi appears to be the earliest known pictorial record of storytelling and thought to date back 45,500 years found in 2017. But in recent years, experts found that the place stones in rock art depicting animals, hand stencils, and human-like figures hunting animals is slowly being erased. According to a study involving Indonesian and Australian experts, is exfoliation due to climate-induced salt efflorescence. The study published on Scientific Reports in May 2021 says, warming temperatures and increasingly severity of El Niño events have expedited the exfoliation process in the cave in Maros Pankep areas. Basran adds that human behavior is another factor causing the significant damage. The picture documentation shows another 1,368.98 square centimeters had peeled off within six months. Ruston says archaeologists must do the tireless work of monitoring the conditions of salt crystal formation and organism growth on the cave wall. This is a very spectacular piece of work by our ancestors. And that's all for today. Stay safe, stay healthy, and have a great day.